Chain rule. Our next derivative shortcut, if you want to call this a shortcut, it's just shorter than limits, which is really all shortcut means, because chain rule can get kind of cumbersome. Uh, I'm also going to throw trig derivatives in here, because we haven't talked about those in class yet. Uh, so your trig derivatives, hey, here they are. Just memorize them. Um, I, I'm going to spare you the proof. Just trust me that these are the derivatives. If you want the proof, we'll have some kind of a weekend summit where we can prove these derivatives. Uh, a few things you may want to look at to uh, the, uh, a few patterns. All right, and here's where the audio inexplicably goes out. So I'm about to show you some patterns. If you look at the derivatives of the cofunction, cosine, cotan, cosecant, they are all negative derivatives. And a few other things. If you look at sine and cosine, they are cofunctions. And their derivatives are also cofunctions. You have cosine and sine. Same thing for tangent. You have secant and cosecant. Um, they are cofunctions. Same thing for secant. You have secant tangent, and the derivative of cosecant is cosecant cotangent. So a couple of patterns there. And right now I'm doing a play by play of a math video, and this is very um, weird. So let's see, what am I doing? I'm erasing some things. What am I about to write here? Oh, yeah! If you forget the derivatives of some of these, but you know your sine and cosine derivative, you could rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine and then do a uh, product rule or quotient rule or whatever applies. So cotangent could be re rewritten as cosine over sine. And what is that window doing? I don't know. Uh, and you could do quotient rule with cosine and sine. So that I'm erasing again. They get three derivatives. Learn those. You will need them. And this is your chain rule. And so let's see. Uh, it's used for composition of functions, which is also functions inside functions. So we're talking about like f of g of x. Not the same as f of x times g of x. This is not multiplication. And when you do the derivative of something like this, you start on the outside and you slowly peel your way inside. So um, we, I did f prime, I left the inside g alone, and then multiplied by the derivative of g. Here we go, I moved that little menu bar down there. That was important. Let's see. There I am, pointing out that I multiplied by the derivative of the inside. You leave the inside alone on the first test. You just slowly peel your way in. And let's do some real examples. All right. Play by play. This is interesting. I'm not actually working this problem right now. I'm just watching the video in silence and, and giving you a play by play. So we have, uh, for number one, a bunch of stuff to the fifth power. I'm showing you the bunch of stuff again. Um, let's see. Down here. I'm just showing you a bunch of stuff. Here's the bunch of stuff. All right. So you have a bunch of stuff to the fifth power. And when I'm doing a chain rule, I read, I read that as x to the fifth. Um, even though it's not really x, but my first task of the derivative, I'm doing the derivative of x to the fifth, which is 5x to the fourth, right there. And so when I'm doing the derivative here, y prime is, I'm going to first bring down the 5, leave the inside alone. You only do one derivative at a time. And the one I'm doing right now is stuff to the fifth. So the inside gets left alone. And then once I do the derivative of the inside, I then peer, I'm sorry, do the derivative of the outside. I then look inside, and I will do the derivative of that. x squared plus 3x plus 1. The derivative is 2x plus 3. So there's our chain rule for number 1. Day number two, right here. Um, let's see, you're going to need to re. What am I doing up here? I thought I finished number one. Why am I still pointing up there? What's going on? Yeah, I left the inside alone. Yeah, I know. I've already said that. Jeez. Okay, finally, number two. Um, we write that as a bunch of stuff to the one half power. Derivatives are a heck of a lot easier if you can see the exponents. So when I do the derivative of this one, my first go is. I'm seeing the stuff to the one half. Oh, I'm about to start in thinking land. Forgot about this. Here's thinking land over here. X to the one half. The derivative of x to the one half is one half x to the negative one half, and that's about what I'm about to do here. Pull down the one half. Leave the inside alone. You do not touch it on the first go. So x cubed minus four x squared negative one half. Now that I've done the derivative of the outside, the, the square root part, I now get to look inside, and I'll do the derivative of the inside. And here, in a couple of seconds, I'm going to realize that the sound wasn't recording. So let's listen to this. This will be fun. Oh, is this recording? I think it is. I hope this is recording my voice. The little lights aren't showing up over here in my left like they're supposed to be. Oh, goodness. Now they're showing up. I don't know what's going on. Let's try Triangle Man. That'll make me feel better. All right.
It is my hope and prayer that everything I just said there was recorded. It may not have been, though. Okay. Um, so let's keep moving. Uh, ooh, E functions. I, people have the hardest time with E functions. I don't know why. Because E should be the easiest derivative. We'll go ahead and try it. So E to the stuff. Now this one inside my E function is x squared plus 1. So for number 3, my inside function is e to the x. And that's the derivative I'm going to do first. And the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So I'm going to do the outside part first, which would be e, and you leave the exponent alone. And now that I've done that, I will multiply by the derivative of what's inside my e function. And the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. So there's my derivative for number 3. It's e to the stuff times 2x. And since I've done that, I'm going to rewrite our derivative rule for e. This is our, our new rule for e. Now that we know the chain rule, if y is equal to e to some function, then the derivative of e to any function, if we chain rule this, you multiply by the derivative of the exponent, and you leave the e part alone which is what I just did. I just wrote the derivative on the right side. So it's the derivative of the exponent times e to the f of x. The derivative of the exponent, which was 2x, times e to the f of x, which was x squared plus 1. Um, all right. So number 4. Here we have sine of x to the 4th plus 2. So my inside function is x to the 4th plus 2. My outside is sine x. And the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So the derivative of sine, I start on my inside. I've done the derivative of sine. Leave the inside alone. I'm not touching the x, squared, x to the fourth plus 2. Now that I've done the outside, I will look inside. The derivative of the inside is 4x cubed. Uh, you will typically see me write the trig derivatives, where I write the derivative of the inside actually in front of it. Um, to me, that's just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. But it's the same thing. So the derivative of sine was cosine, and then I looked inside after I did the sine derivative. Good, 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 good. How are we on time? Seven minutes. We're doing all right. Start on the outside, slowly peel your way to the inside. Start on the outside, slowly peel your way to the inside. Uh, let's see, number five, cosine squared of x. People have a hard time when it's written like this. It should be an easy chain rule. Instead of reading it as cosine squared x, read it as cosine x. I don't like the bracket. Let's do parentheses. Cosine x all squared. Yeah, yeah? Yeah? So if you see it like that, then you'll identify, oh, yeah, my outside function is x squared. So I have stuff squared, and the derivative of something squared, derivative of something squared, I will bring down the 2, leave the inside alone. I'm doing the derivative of x squared right now. So stuff squared, bring down the 2 to the first power. Now that I've done the outside, I've peeled that layer off. Now I can finally get to the inside. And I'll do the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. It's one of those trig derivatives you need to memorize. Good, 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 good. All right, number 6 here. Number 6 here, I'm going to rewrite this as tangent of x cubed plus 9 all to the 1 half power and um, start outside function that I see with derivatives we start outside and work our way in I see a bunch of stuff to the 1 half power so I'm actually going to start by bringing the 1 half down leave the inside alone you don't touch the inside on the first pass you don't touch the inside on the first pass. So we'll bring the 1 half down, leave the inside alone, subtract 1 from 1 half, and you get a negative 1 half. I didn't like the way that looked. That's a little better. So negative 1 half. So now that I've done the derivative of stuff to the 1 half, now I start to peek inside. And actually what happens here is on the inside, I have another chain rule. I have a tangent of something else. So I'm going to start with the tangent part. I'm going to do the derivative of tangent which is secant squared. Now, I'm not going to touch the x cubed plus 9. You only do one layer at a time. My next layer was the tangent. I'll leave the x cubed plus 9 alone, 
And then, now that I've done the tangent, I can look a little bit further inside, and now I'm going to do the derivative of the x cubed plus 9, which is 3x squared. So this was a problem that actually had a chain within a chain, and you have to take it one little step at a time. So we did the derivative of the stuff to the 1 half, left the inside alone, now on the inside I had to start with the tangent, left the angle alone, and then I multiplied by the derivative of the angle. And we'll stop right there. Please don't try to clean these up. Just leave them as they are. Now let's see, I think I had four more that I wanted to try. All right. Let's see, 3 to the sine of x to the fifth. Now this is another hairy problem. And my big function is I see 3 to the stuff. And if we haven't done a lot of exponential derivatives. But if you have 3 to the x, the derivative is 3 to the x times the natural log of 3. So when I do the derivative of 3 to the stuff, it's going to be 3. I'm going to leave the stuff alone. So it's going to be to the sine of x to the fifth. I'm not going to touch the exponent. And then times the natural log of 3. Okay, so there I just did the derivative of 3 to some power. Now I start looking inside. I did the derivative of the 3 part. Now I'm going to do the derivative of sine x to the fifth. But again, I've got to do this by layers. I'm going to start with the sine. I'm going to do the derivative of sine x first. And the derivative of sine is cosine. Leave x to the fifth alone. I just did the derivative of sine. Now that I've done the derivative of sine, now I can look inside and I can do the derivative of x to the fifth, which is 5x to the fourth. Good, 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 great, that's wonderful. Um, just slowly peel one layer at a time. We did the 3 to the sum power first, then the sine, then the x to the fifth. Let's we'll see, number 8, number 8, what do we notice here? What do we see here? Oh, it's a product. We actually have to do the product rule. So, um, I have a first term and a second term, so my derivative is going to be the derivative of my first, which is 4x cubed. Leave the second term alone, e to the secant x. Plus, then I'll leave my first term alone, and now I've got to do the derivative of e to the secant x. Okay, well, e, the derivative of e to something is just e to something, right? 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 So I'm going to do the derivative of e first, and the derivative of e to something is e to that something. But then... Once I've done the derivative of e, I've got to look inside the e function. There's a secant. I need to multiply by the derivative of secant, which is secant x tangent x. Good, good. So first derivative of second plus, or I'm sorry, derivative of first second plus first derivative of second. So uh, product rule with the chain rule in the product. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, one more, one more. I thought there were two more, but there's only one more. And this is a beast of a problem. Uh, first thing, I see sine cubed. That's the same thing as saying sine of all of this cubed. So it's like my big function is a whole bunch of stuff cubed. So first thing I'm going to do for this derivative, I'm going to have to leave a lot of room, is I see stuff cubed. I'm going to bring down the 3. And all the stuff stays alone. You can only do one layer at a time. Do not try to do two layers at the same time. So I'm leaving all the inside alone. Watch my parentheses. Okay, I brought down the 3, and I'm going to subtract 1. Okay, so I just did the derivative of stuff cubed. Now I'm going to look inside and see what I have. Okay, the first layer on the inside is sine of a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to have to do the derivative of the sine first. So that would be cosine. Derivative of sine is cosine. All the stuff inside the sine is going to stay. So that would be cosine of the square root of x to the fourth plus 7. Oh, and I just caught something that I should have changed. Not should have changed. I mean, I can still salvage this. It's not bad. Let's see. Did I get my parentheses right? All right, so I just did the derivative of sine. Now I'm going to peer and look in a little bit closer. Now there's a cosine. I have to do the derivative of cosine. Okay, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. The inside's not going to change. And here's where I'm going to... I will change the way the inside is written because I'm about to have to do the derivative of that. The inside, the square root of something, I'm going to change that to x to the fourth plus 7 all to the one-half power. 
because I'm about to have to do that derivative. Okay, so I just did um, cosine. Now I've got to tackle the square root part of this. So the square root and the derivative of the square root of something, and I've run out of room, so I'm going to have to write times, and the derivative of the square root, I will bring down the one-half, and then I will leave the inside alone. I'm not going to tackle the x to the fourth plus seven. I'm only doing the square root part. So x to the fourth plus seven is to the negative one-half, right? So I just did the derivative of stuff to the one-half power. Now I finally can look a little bit deeper in, and my last piece that I'm going to do the derivative of is the x to the fourth plus seven, and the derivative of that is four x cubed. And finally, we have just knocked out the whole derivative. You got to start on the outside, and you slowly peel your way to the inside like a banana. Um, only this time we had a banana inside a banana inside a banana inside a banana. I think inside another banana, which would be freaking awesome if I could find one of those. A five-layered banana would be a great trick to play on somebody. Anyway, all right, so there we go. That is the chain rule. Start on the outside, slowly peel your way inside, and then if you have product or quotient rule, do that as it applies. So there we are, chain rule. Have a great day.